Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. Today I want to show one of my favorite examples from classical mechanics that involves air resistant force, right? So the drag felt through the air and uh, some books have it as uh, retarding force. So it's just uh, friction in the air. So air resistance and drag force, all the particles and things in the air that are slowing you down. And so now we get to include them instead of just ignoring them like we do in physics one or two. All right, so scenario is we have this initial velocity of, the, of this ball right here going upward. And as it goes upward, it goes to a maximum height where the velocity final is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the max height right here. And then in this other drawing here, a moment after, now this is your initial velocity because you're starting all the way at the top and then your final velocity is down here, coming downward. Okay, so it just follows this type of figure here. So we're just gonna focus on this one here for one video and then I'll do the other one on this side on the other video. Okay, so let's focus on the way going up. All right, so as this object, the ball goes up, it feels drag and air resistance, right? So it's gonna always feel gravity going downward, right, mg, so the mass of this object times the gravity, and this represents just the ball at some point. Okay, so it's gonna feel gravity going down, pushing it down, and then you're also gonna feel air resistance in the direction opposite to your motion, so downward. So as the ball goes up, it's gonna feel gravity pushing it down, and it's gonna feel the air resistance, right? Because it's hard to push through the air full of molecules and air and nitrogen and whatever so you're feeling all of that drag and so we represent that by this air resistive force m k v squared where k is the drag coefficient and this is some instantaneous speed of the particle at that point okay so let's focus on this side and before we do that i want to i want to just look at this notation here so x double dot is going to be the same thing as acceleration x double dot is just the second derivative of position or we can also say the derivative with respect to time of velocity okay um, so I'm just gonna write double dot x equals to a so I've chosen to make my x hat up just for convenience you know and then this is the y you can choose this is the y and this is the x it doesn't matter so i chose going up x and now x double dot is equal to a right a is equal to the second derivative of position okay a is also equal to dv dt and we can also write it as dv dx times dx dt. So this notation here, if we cancel out this dx and this dx, notice how we still stay with dv dt, which is the same thing as this. Okay, so all I've added was an extra dx over dx, which is just one, so we can always add that but these two cancel out. And so then you're left back with dv over dt. Okay, and this is a very convenient notation that we need to use because then if you notice here, okay, dv over dx, we're gonna leave like that, but here we have dx over dt, which is velocity. Okay, so I'm gonna write this term here, right? Velocity is equal to dx over dt. And then I'm going to keep this here. So dv over dx. So this is what we're left with for x double dot. Okay, and we're going to need that. All right, and then one more thing before we start. So terminal velocity. Okay, let's understand this. So as we're going up, so we're here. Okay, the object and as we're going up okay 
we're feeling our mass times gravity, right? And then when we're going down, okay, we're still feeling mass times gravity, but you will reach your fastest speed when mass times gravity is equal to the coefficient of drag force times velocity is upward. So in other words, as you're falling down, when these two things are equal, which is your weight times gravity and all the wind resistance or force in your way, when those two things are equal, you'll be falling your fastest. So you won't be falling any faster than that, okay? And so we call that terminal velocity. And that's according to your weight. So every object has a different terminal velocity because they have a different mass times gravity. And then once that's equal to the drag force, which is, you know, all the stuff in the air times the velocity, instantaneous velocity, then now you can express this as your terminal velocity, which is just going to be VT is equal to mg over k. Okay, so that was just kv is equal to mg, and then I just divided by k. All right, so I made this one equal to this, and then I divided by k, so now I have this, this term here. All right, so now let's start. So we wanna do the sum of forces, Newton's second law, on the way up. Okay, so let's see what we have. We're gonna have, for our forces, right, we're going upward, and remember that upward is positive, and downward here is gonna be negative. So if we're going up, and two forces are going in the opposite direction, then our forces are gonna be minus k m v squared for this term, and minus mg for this term. Those two things are gonna equal m a, but we're gonna write a as x double dot, okay? So this is how we start. If this part is wrong, the entire problem will be wrong. So this is mo the most important part, understanding what part is negative, what part is positive, and to make this notation. Okay, so now let's change up this x. So we have minus x, minus km v squared minus mg is equal to m, and we have v dv over dx. Okay, so now let's separate both, both of these derivatives into each side. Uh, but before we do that, we gotta group things together. So, and let's, let's get rid of this m. So it's the same mass, the ball doesn't change. So all these masses, we're gonna divide by them. And then we're gonna have this term minus this term is equal to this. So let's divide all of this and put it underneath v dv, okay? And we'll leave dx alone on this side. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna pull out a negative here, okay? So I'm gonna pull out a negative and I'm gonna leave it as kv squared plus, sorry, no more m. So plus g is equal to v dv dx. Now let's make the swap. Let's put dx on this side with the negative, and let's put this whole term here. We're gonna divide by this whole term and put it on the bottom. So we're gonna have negative dx is equal to v over all of this, which is kv squared plus g, and the dv stays on this side. Okay, so now that we have both of them on each side, right, let's take the integral so we can get um, our position. Okay, so right now we started off with acceleration, but we changed that into dv dx. So right away we can have um, our position and we just integrate this velocity, okay? So we're integrating both sides and our limits of integration on this side are gonna be from zero to 
a certain height. So x final will be x height because that's how far up we went. Okay, and then for velocity, we're just gonna have uh, v initial, some initial velocity we started it with, and then when we get to the top, v final is equal to zero, right here. Okay, so let's integrate this. And we're gonna get, let's see, we got negative xh on the left side. And then for here, let's do a u substitution. So we're gonna have u is equal to this bottom part, which is kv squared plus g. du is gonna be equal to, let's see, we got 2kv dv. Okay, and then let's divide by 2kv, so 1 over 2kv, we got du here, and dv still back over here. Okay, so if we replace dv, which is this, with 1 over 2kv, notice how this v and this v will cancel out. Okay, so I'll have 1 over 2k left over from my dv term. I'm still gonna have my integral. Okay, we have uh, still v initial, v final is equal to zero. And since this term got canceled out with this one, this whole thing was equal to u. I got one over u. And what's left over from that was the du. Okay, so now all I gotta integrate is this, one over u is gonna be ln. And so let's move this over here finish off this integral. So I'm going to move the, the entire thing here. This here is the entire thing. So all of that. Okay, so I have negative xh is equal to 1 over 2k. And I'm going to put brackets because now I'm going to have ln of u. And so ln of u is equal to this here. So let's write ln of u and we need to evaluate from zero I mean initial velocity to zero right but this velocity here goes into this not into the u and so let's rewrite this u here so we got the left side okay we got 1 over 2k and then we have ln of k I'm gonna put a bracket I mean a parentheses here where the v is supposed to be Right. So that's final, and then minus ln, okay, we have k, again, an opening where v is supposed to be, plus g. So this is how we're going to do the final minus the initial. Okay, so final is going to be zero, and then initial, we have an initial velocity here. Okay, so we get, we're going to get rid of this term. We're going to let, be left with ln of g. So negative xh, 1 over 2k. Okay, we have here ln of g minus ln of kv naught squared plus g. All right, and so then if I use the properties of ln, uh, I'm just going to put this one on top of that one. So negative kh. 1 over 2k, and then I have ln of, this one's the positive one, so it goes on top, and we have this one on the bottom, okay, and one more step here before we finish, um, I'm just going to flip, so if I put this negative in front of the ln, so if I put it on the other side, and I put it in front of the ln, it's going to go to the exponential, Right? These are the rules of ln. It's going to go to the, to the exponential, and it's going to flip this inside. And so really what we'll be left with is x at that height, the position at, at a max height, 1 over 2k, okay? And then we have ln of k v naught squared plus g over g. So we flip this inside. Okay, so I'll write it over here. If we have ln of, 
So if I have ln of u, for example, right, and then I just put a negative in front of it, that's the same thing as saying ln of 1 over u because it goes to the exponential. So in other words, it goes ln of u to the negative 1. So there's a negative 2 here, be negative 2, and so forth. Okay, so these are properties of ln. And so that's what we did here. We passed this negative here to this side, we put it on top, and now we just flipped it. And so then we're left with our position at max height will be represented by this. Okay, and so now in the next video, I wanna show what happens in the downward direction.